go hide, they're going to find you. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, Taken, the abduction phenomenon. Men and women who claim they have been taken by aliens. The next thing I remembered was seeing the beam coming right towards the back of the canoe. You'll hear stories of bizarre experiments performed on unwilling human subjects. They put a metal rod to my tailbone. I had something shoved up my nose. Witness their moments of anguish relived through hypnotic regression. Coming towards us, I don't know what it's going to do. It makes me feel like I'm flying apart. <laughs> Without case studies, you'll hear the stories of people whose lives have been forever changed. All of a sudden, I feel like my whole body is on fire. Every inch of my skin is burning, and I realize I couldn't move. The researcher who thinks he's discovered an alien agenda. There's a very great interest on the part of the UFO occupants in human reproduction. They do need our genes to propagate their own species. The abductee who claims he's been forced to breed with his captors. I was with an alien um, that wasn't totally at will. It's hard to explain. The survivors who struggle to cope with the aftermath of their ordeals. I know how crazy it sounds for a woman to say she's been implanted with an alien fetus, but I'm sorry, it's the truth. The experts who believe the shocking accounts. These people have been traumatized by a very real and present experience in their lives. And the skeptics who say it's all a figment of the imagination. They can't tell the difference between whether it was a memory or a real event. And you'll see our final analysis of all the evidence in our next report. As we uncover the facts about alien contacts on Unexplained Mysteries, Taken, the Abduction Phenomenon. Over the past three decades, the number of reported alien abductions has skyrocketed. Men and women claim to have been taken by extraterrestrials and transported on beams of light into spacecraft. In order to unlock these incredible stories, experts have experimented with regressive hypnotherapy. Over and over again, we get these hidden consistencies in uh, abduction reports which come out through hypnosis. These individuals report this experience uh, as real. But it is not dream, it is not fantasy, it is uh, not delusion. Abductee accounts revealed under hypnosis are shocking in their consistency. And this is when I saw this, this spotlight, Ben was doing this like a beam. But once the beam of light hit me, I was paralyzed. And at that moment, that's when I was on the craft. They were about three feet tall. Maybe this high. They, their skin looked like it was made of marshmallow. White, pale color. And they had real big eyes, large, dark eyes. While most abductees speak of being taken by the often described gray alien depicted here, Others report insect-like characteristics in some of their captors. There's one being in particular that I always recognize, and he's not a gray. He's taller, he's thinner, he's got a bigger head, he's got bigger eyes. His limbs are very praying mantis-like. There have even been sightings of extraterrestrials that seem to be alien-human hybrids. According to experts, one of the most telling signs of abduction is a gap of hours or days that cannot be accounted for. This missing time aspect is very, very common in abduction experiences where uh, the person cannot remember where he or she was. One possible reason for the lost time, alien testing. With uncanny similarity, Nearly all report being subjected to insidious medical experiments. The person will describe being on a table, which is generally metallic. Uh, they uh, are unable to move. They describe operations which take place. The next thing I remember, they have this 
thing in front of my eye, like a metal instrument that was kind of like shaped like an L, and stuck it. It went all the way back down to here, though, in my throat. Abductees point to the scars they retain from their encounters as proof of the experience. Connie Smith thought she had merely dreamed of a violent UFO encounter. I just woke up in the morning and I did have that groggy feeling that, you know, that like I've been up all night yet I got eight hours sleep. And um, I sat down on the couch and I looked down and I had a mark just above my knee and uh, there was no pain to it. You could poke and poke, poke at it and there was no pain. And then I had a little scab in my belly button with a little pinhole puncture mark in the middle. Her suspicions deepened when her daughter reported a similar experience. I mean, she had the same huge bruise, which was not painful to her. And I asked if I could see her belly button, and I checked, and she had the same thing as I did. Jesse Long says he has been abducted repeatedly since his first close encounter at the age of four. After being subjected to a battery of experiments, he was returned home with a similar telltale scar. My mother remembers me uh, pointing out that I had a scar on my leg. Um, she said it never bled. Under the skin, Jesse detected a solid object. It was in my leg for 34 years and I finally decided to have it removed. And this is what they took out. Tests on the object determined its composition to be silicone and trace metals. Jesse believes it is a tracking device. Brian Kosky also says he is the victim of multiple abductions. There's this big black triangle just moving real slow across the sky and kind of followed over, watched it. And got to about here, kind of stopped, pivoted a little bit, made a hissing sound, and then kind of continued on to the north real slow and just kept watching it. He says that he was permitted to move about the ship. They have these little silver panels that uh, they tend to control the ship with their uh, mind. This is the tail they seem to do their navigation from. Are these accounts merely fantasies? Or are they evidence of a staggering development which will alter the course of mankind? Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, do these twins share an experience so frightening that it proves they have been taken by aliens? The next thing I remembered was they turned me over and then they were doing some type of anal exam. And can their story pass the lie detector test? There's absolutely, positively no doubt in my mind that they are being absolutely honest with me. And later, are UFOs snatching humans as part of a chilling plan that could alter our future? I felt as if somebody had taken my insides and just ripped me open inside, and I could feel something pulling out of me. Could alien crossbreeding be behind these close encounters? I had a, a very vivid experience of having a fetus put into my body and removed. Or are there other earthly explanations? It comes from fairy tales, old science fiction, film, a lot of sources. And we'll give you our final analysis with our RX report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Phenomena. One individual story about being taken may be hard to believe. But what about mass abductions? Groups of people all seized at once, recalling the same chilling event. Something coming towards us. I don't know what it's going to do. Uh makes me feel like I'm flying apart. Maine's Allagash River is the site of an encounter 
that forever altered the lives of four men. We were just a couple of guys camping, fishing, and we were excited about getting out of the city and being in the wilderness. Art students Charlie False, Chuck Rack, and twins Jim and Jack Weiner were looking for a break from the city when they set out for the backwoods of Maine. The last thing on our minds was any UFOs or anything like that. We just wanted to go fishing. It was very, very dark. So we decided to build a fire so we could find our way back to our campsite. And all four of us climbed in one canoe with our fishing equipment and headed out into the lake. While we were out there for approximately 15 or 20 minutes fishing with no luck. <laughs> and um, suddenly Chuck Rack said, hey guys, that's a heck of a case of swamp gas. And we turned around and uh, probably 150, maybe 200 yards away at the most, coming out of the trees was this huge ball of glowing, pulsating light. Uh, I remember it as being a very bright, round sphere of light that had kind of a uh, roiling quality to it. It was yellow white in nature. The next thing I remembered was seeing the beam coming right towards the back of the canoe. And at that point, we started paddling very quickly towards the shore. And it kept just following us, coming closer and closer and closer. I was in a panic, to be honest with you. A second later, it was right, right on, almost on top of us, with this beam coming across the water right towards our canoe. And I remember thinking, well, we're not going to outrun this thing. There's no way we're going to outrun this thing. And then the next thing I remembered was standing on the beach. Back at their campsite, the roaring fire had burnt down to embers. The last time we thought was 15 or 20 minutes, tops. And we couldn't understand why the fire had burnt down so soon. None of the men could account for the missing time, nor were they ready to discuss what had just occurred. The four of us were just left there standing on the beach uh, in total silence. We, we didn't really even talk to each other. I guess we were in shock. Little mention was made of the incident for 12 years until strange dreams began to torment the wieners. And then I would wake up and I would be drenched in sweat and my heart would be beating really fast. I started having nightmares about being in some room or some area with uh, these strange creatures around and us. I said, I can't believe you're telling me this because I've been having the same dream. A psychiatrist evaluated the twins and referred them to UFO researcher, Dr. Ray Fowler. Only after agreeing to hypnosis did the brothers begin to recall their shared experience. Here are actual recordings of the session in which all four men from the expedition relive their experience. A beam is coming towards us. I don't know what it's going to do. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm flying apart. Each of their individual accounts depicted the same harrowing details. Had no idea where I was. Then I realized that the three guys were sitting to my left on this bench naked. All I knew was I was in a strange place, laying naked, paralyzed with this thing coming towards me. I remember um, these creatures examining my brother with a, a type of wand. And then they were doing some type of anal exam. I remembered um, the pressure, uh, the heat of uh, my physical body being ripped to shreds, like on a molecular level. I mean, it's the only way I can verbalize it, but it is an extremely unpleasant feeling. It feels like death. I think that the Wieners opened Pandora's box because now they have questions about reality that they never had before. They have questions for which there are no answers. To eliminate the possibility of a hoax, Ray Fowler arranged for a polygraph test to be administered. After administering the examinations, there is absolutely, positively, no doubt in my mind that they are being absolutely honest with me when they tell me that they were confronted by a phenomena in the Allegash region. 
one person might fool a polygraph examiner. You have four uh, all uh, passing the tests and the polygraph examiner being convinced that all four are telling the truth is uh, very important. I, I feel very strongly that uh, what they uh, describe is a real experience. But to these men, the trip up the Allagash was only the start of an ongoing journey. It's not over. This is an ongoing thing. We're, we're basically, we're tagged. Well, what can I do? Go hide? They're going to find you. Next stop, if extraterrestrials are abducting humans, what is their alien agenda? <laughs> That is a woman crying out in emotional pain that her child is being taken from her. Are these events tied to the essence of human biology? Sometimes we'd be abducted and there would be sexual situations that would pair off. They've lost their own reproductive capabilities, so they are trying to find a new genetic stock uh, with us. And later, Hollywood's take on aliens. Close encounters for good or evil had <laughs> an enormous effect on uh, what people expected aliens to look like. You put it all in perspective in our exclusive on X report. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries. Taken. The abduction phenomenon. For those who have been taken, the question is not if abductions occur. But why? Indianapolis, Indiana. Debbie Jordan and her mother, Janet White, noticed a glowing beam of light radiating from their backyard. As I looked out the window, I seen a, a light that was about the size of a basketball. A really strange light coming out of the pump house that's next to the swimming pool out back. Debbie armed herself with a shotgun and ventured toward the light. And Debbie went out in the back, and I watched her out the back door, and she came to the pump house, and she opened the door. All of a sudden, I feel like my whole body is on fire. Every inch of my skin is burning. And I realized I couldn't move. And I also could hardly see. It was like I'd been attacked by a mob of tourists with cameras flashing me in the eyes. Neither woman could immediately recall what happened next. Later, we figured out I was gone in like an hour and a half, and I don't remember like 10 minutes. Debbie immediately came down with a mysterious disease, and the family dog that lived in the backyard succumbed to what was suspected radiation sickness. These clues and the neighbor's identical account of the blinding light drew the attention of UFO researcher Bud Hopkins. There was more evidence supporting this uh, abduction than any in so far investigated. Hopkins first studied the ground where the incident took place. This is what happened to that nice, rich, loamy, uh, black-brown soil that uh, the backyard in Indiana had. It was turned sort of gray and, and hard as a rock. Hopkins persuaded Debbie to submit to hypnotherapy. Something's not right. I thought I was being squashed. Squashed? The whole body? My stomach. Under hypnosis, an alarming discovery. Debbie Jordan had been pregnant at the time of the incident, but lost the baby. I felt as if somebody had taken my insides and just ripped me open inside and I could feel pulling, something pulling out of me and this little tiny thing that looked like a, a, a mouse with no skin on it. This was the first case that let us understand the alien's purpose. Hopkins theory that alien abduction phenomenon is related to a need to genetically manipulate the human species. That is a woman crying out in pain 
emotional pain that her child is being taken from her. Through hypnosis, Debbie recalled witnessing a human-like child during her encounter. She had tufts of white cottony hair sticking out of her head all over, really large eyes, but human, blue. When I thought, oh, I'd love to hug you, I asked if I could take her home with me. And he told me, no, she could survive with me. I assumed they were telling me that I was this child's mother. Debbie says her abductions continued for years afterward, halting only after her hysterectomy. But now, her legacy of abduction has been passed to her two children. I don't expect people to believe any of the stuff that me or any of my family members tell them. Believe me, if I hadn't seen some of this stuff with my own eyes, there's no way I would have believed any of it. Next, is an alien sexual agenda behind the abduction phenomenon? It could be other people's wives, other people's husbands. I've experienced certain things like that. I was with an alien um, that wasn't totally at will. It's hard to explain. Hear one woman's account of carrying an alien baby. I had a, a very vivid experience of having a fetus put into my body and removed. It's ridiculously hard for me to talk about. And later, Hollywood's controversial role in producing the abduction phenomenon. Close encounters for good or evil had an enormous effect on uh, what people expected aliens to look like. And you'll see the ultimate roundup of the facts on our Unex Report. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Explain mysteries taken, the abduction phenomenon. They are close encounters of the most intimate variety. As reports of abductions continue to rise, so too does another alarming trend. The aggressive sexual nature of many recent abductions. Saugerties, New York. James LaFonte and friends began seeking refuge from the city on regular weekend trips to the woodlands of the upstate region. I first met James in 87, and uh, a few friends of us, we all went upstate to uh, the trailer. Just to have a nice weekend and enjoy ourselves and have fun. Going up weekly almost became an addiction. Um, it was for enjoyment, but it was almost like we were being called back. As with many abduction reports, the first sign of an unusual occurrence was the shared sense of lost time. James LaFonte contacted me because of certain fragmented memories. He'd been with a group of friends and uh, they knew something had happened. There was a time lapse. Hopkins uncovered a common trait among the group, memories of alien contact in childhood. Ever since I was a child, I used to wake up and I used to see uh, white light and shadowy figures moving around my bed, and I would get scared. When I was younger, I remember like an alien looking through the window, being watched, a feeling of being watched all the time. Through hypnotherapy, Hopkins yielded shared traumatic memories. It turns out week by week, we were all being abducted as a group. Like on a table. I think I'm big eyes and can't look more good. I gotta get out of here. But the detail and scope of these repressed memories exposed an incident of group abduction beyond any on record. I remember seeing these bright lights almost in every window and there's domes on top of the trailer. And um, everything was blowing and we just become basically paralyzed. During the abduction, uh, we would walk down this dark, dark road in a trance state. And we'd be walking to uh, the craft, which was always in the same spot in this uh, pit area. The Saugerties group recalled forced medical tests. And there seemed to be a disturbing focus to the experiments. Something was being worked on my genitals. Um, I would see James across the room and the same thing being done to him. Um, I do know a sperm was removed. 
To some experts, the group's accounts expose an alien agenda of harvesting human genetic material. There's a very great interest on the part of the UFO occupants in human reproduction, sperm, ova, the DNA, but it has also included an interest in human sexuality itself. Sometimes we'd be abducted and there would be sexual situations that would pair off. It could be other people's wives, other people's husbands, uh, different friends that they grew with. According to Lafonte, the experimental pairings could also include alien participants. I've experienced certain things like that. I was with an alien um, that wasn't totally at will. It's hard to explain. To further cope with their trauma, members of the group sought counseling with a clinical psychologist. Generally, uh, when I work with people using their imagination, there's a, a personalized stamp that people put into their imagery because it's being generated from a part of themselves. These abductees uh, and their reports do not have this kind of personalized stamp, and I think it makes it even more credible. I lost plenty of jobs. I lost friends. I lost family. I lost a number of things, and uh, it got to the point where I would, um, you know, I, I was contemplating suicide in a sense because there was no escape. Is the disturbing account of the Sogarties group a hint as to why aliens are seeking out humankind? If so, many believe that Kim Carlsberg represents the next piece of the puzzle. Kim Carlsberg was a successful professional photographer when an encounter experience changed the direction of her life. I came home, went to bed, I woke up, and I was not in my bed any longer. I was standing in what I thought was an elevator. I was paralyzed. Like so many prior abductee accounts, Kim recalls medical experiments happening around her. And there were these little um, short off-white beings, naked guys with uh, big black eyes, um, doing things to these people on these tables. And I didn't know if I was going to live through the night. I really thought that these people might be dead and I thought that I was going to be next. So I started screaming and uh, a taller alien that looked just like these guys uh, walked up behind me and slapped me on the back of the neck and I started to pass out. Um, next thing I knew I woke up, I was in a smaller room by myself on a table and uh, you know I'm completely disoriented. I, I don't know where I am. I, I don't know what's happened to me. In a series of semi-lucid flashes, Kim recalls the alien testing. I had an experience where they uh, put a metal rod to my tailbone and they take skin samples. Um, I had something shoved up my nose. I felt this drug feeling come over my body and I knew that I was going to be unconscious within a matter of seconds and there wasn't anything that I could get and I woke up back in my bed and at that point, um, you know, I was just, I thought that I was had completely lost my mind. I knew I wasn't hallucinating, but it was the only logical explanation. And that encounter was not an isolated episode. She has had numerous subsequent abductions. One memory is particularly harrowing. I had a, a very vivid experience of having <clears throat> having a, uh, a fetus put into my body and removed. It's ridiculously hard for me to talk about. Is Kim's experience corroborating evidence to others' accounts of baby harvesting? If so, why would an advanced race need human babies? One theory holds that alien evolution may have stalled, requiring human DNA for future development. Some people hypothesize that their uh, planet or where they come from is, is arid and barren and they've lost their own reproductive capabilities so they are trying to find a new genetic stock uh, with us. They do need our genes to um, propagate their own species. It's a recurring thing that we hear from a lot of abductees. Uh, they're studying us, they're studying our sexuality, our emotions, and they're using us for some uh, design goal as uh, the center of this experiment. Kim's story has been met with fierce skepticism. I know how crazy it sounds for a woman to say she's been implanted with an alien fetus. I'm an intelligent woman, I'm highly educated, I know how the world perceives it. 
but I'm sorry. It's the truth. To Kim and all abductees, the need for more research into the abduction phenomenon is urgent. Such study could either prove the reality of their claims or provide alternate answers for these troubling encounters. An extraordinary phenomenon such as this demands an extraordinary investigation. It is irresponsible to dismiss it. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, are these alien encounters influenced by popular culture? The more people know about what aliens are expected to look like, the more they're likely to describe an alien as looking like that preconceived idea. Or is Hollywood merely mirroring actual incidents? I think what was unique about Close Encounters is it was science fiction, and yet in a sense it wasn't. They can't tell the difference between whether it was a memory or a real event, or whether it was imagination. And this is the problem. And finally, we'll analyze the evidence in our Unex Report on Unexplained Mysteries. Explained Mysteries, Taken, the Abduction Phenomenon, with reported sightings and alien encounters growing each year, so too have the skeptical inquiries from non-believers. Notable among this group are a number of prominent psychologists who claim that the real root of the UFO phenomenon lies deep in the unconscious mind. It's what we call waking dreams. When people start to fall asleep, on many occasions, they, are, they have a mix, a peculiar mixture of uh, reality and fantasy or dreams. And uh, in this particular state of consciousness, uh, which is an altered state, they see little aliens and they see spaceships and lights in the sky and so on. But others defend the technique for abductees in this fragile state. They appear to have been overwhelmed by an episode outside their own control and making, which leads them in a post-traumatic state. It is this very condition that makes them vulnerable to suggestion. They can't tell the difference between whether it was a memory or a real event, or whether it was imagination. And this is the problem. It's very interesting. Either there's something very special about this fantasy, that causes what otherwise does not occur or it's not a fantasy others point out that abductions were scarcely reported before the science fiction boom of the mid-1950s carried visions of aliens into popular culture this is a composite of what they look like larger eyes smaller nose no lips no protruding part of the ear no hair and uh, a gray tone to the skin a new hampshire couple betty and barney hill made news by becoming the first to claim that they had been abducted by aliens ufo experts point to the hill abduction as a watershed event in alien evolution but to author James Oberg, the case is notable for more earthly reasons. A lot of Betty's memories are directly traceable back to a movie called Invaders from Mars. Many of the themes, many of the imageries from that film appear in almost recognizable form in Betty's story. In the account, there was kidnapping being taken on board a flying saucer. There were needles being inserted into people's brains or other parts of their bodies. Barney Hill's recollections focused on one major feature. The unique feature here is, is these wrapped around eyes, the eyeballs that move off to the forehead, off to the side of the head. It was, an, it was very original. And yet, less than two weeks after this face first appeared on television, Barney Hill, under hypnosis, suddenly remembered that his aliens had eyes like that, had eyes that wrapped around. Was it cause and effect? Did he see the show? Was his memory polluted by this Hollywood version? Can't prove it, but the sequence is highly suggestive. By the early 1970s, Hollywood seemed to settle on an accepted standard for what an alien looked like. 
According to skeptics, this design trend was again echoed in the description by alleged abductees. The thing you'll never forget when you look into the face of these things is the eyes. Very large, intimidating black eyes. Very small opening for a mouth, no ears. Tremendous head, um, very thin body, uh, long arms. Yet, science fiction archivist Ron Miller traces images back much further. It comes from fairy tales, science fiction, film, a lot of sources. They go back decades, even a century or more. And the earliest sort of realistic depictions of an alien that I have from a book that was published in 1884. Ninety years later, a Steven Spielberg film about alien contact cemented the image. Did close encounters of the third kind also plant suggestions in the minds of future abductees? Close encounters, for good or evil, had an enormous effect on uh, what people expected aliens to look like. And if anything really focused all these disparate threads into one sort of standard alien, it was close encounters. But Joe Elvis, the production designer for Close Encounters claims that logic is reversed. I think what was unique ab about Close Encounters is it was science fiction, and yet in a sense it wasn't because we weren't manufacturing something that was convenient. We took these things from all the encounters that we could record and sort of put it into the funnel and it came out with these kind of images. Kelly Freese, a celebrated science fiction illustrator, is disappointed by the dominance of the gray, both in pop culture and in the reports of abductees. I hate to think that the universe is, is so dull that that's the best it can come up with. Are we supposed to assume that only one race uh, managed to uh, accomplish space flight and come to the Earth? Or are there more, more races out there? If so, what do the other races look like? When we come back, the Unex Report examines the facts and addresses the mysteries. What can we learn from all of these abductees reporting nearly identical encounters? And do aliens really have an agenda for mankind? Or is extraterrestrial contact the product of our collective imagination? That's the Unex Report, next on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, taken, the abduction phenomenon. Now, our Unex Report. The past 40 years have seen a surge in reports of man being taken by aliens. Experts point to a number of signs as evidence of abduction, such as missing time. This missing time aspect is very, very common in abduction experiences, where uh, the person cannot remember where he or she was. Other indications include strange medical symptoms and even implants. It was in my leg for 34 years and I finally decided to have it removed. And this is what they took out. The use of hypnosis is increasingly being used to access hidden memories of alien encounters. And there were these little um, short off-white beings, naked guys with uh, big black eyes. Um, doing things to these people on these tables. I felt as if somebody had taken my insides and just ripped me open inside. Over and over again, we get these hidden consistencies in uh, abduction reports which come out through hypnosis. And there are striking similarities in the descriptions of the aliens. Very large, intimidating black eyes. Very small opening for a mouth, no ears. Tremendous head, um, very thin body, uh, long arms. Many encounters now seem to reveal that an alien breeding agenda may be behind many abductions. There's a very great interest on the part of the UFO occupants in human reproduction. They do need our genes to 
um, propagate their own species. I had a, a very vivid experience of having <clears throat> having a, uh, a fetus put into my body and removed. Among the most compelling cases are mass abductions. Subjects are taken together and recall the same experience. During the abduction, uh, we would walk down this dark, dark road in a trance state. Remember, um, these creatures examining my brother with a, a type of wand. Polygraph machines have further verified their accounts. There's absolutely, positively no doubt in my mind that they are being absolutely honest with me. But skeptics maintain that Hollywood is the real source of all alien sightings. More people know about what aliens are expected to look like, and more they're likely to describe an alien as looking like that preconceived idea. One thing is certain. The complex reality of abduction will continue to spur debate as long as so many questions remain unanswered. It is irresponsible to dismiss it. An extraordinary phenomenon such as this demands an extraordinary investigation. Until that time, the alien abduction phenomenon will remain an unexplained mystery.